Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to start the presentation now. So thanks for attending the webinar dedicated to television trends in French speaking Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we decided to do two versions of the presentation, one in English and one in French, uh, which will take place later on this afternoon. So uh, let's start first with a quick overview of data access activities. We are a market research and event company covering all regions of the world. Um, the, the intelligence service provides indicators on television, OTT, telecom, and technologies markets. Uh, we also organize events in Europe, Latin America, and Africa. And finally, we publish an online newsletter dedicated to the sector's evolution in Africa and in Latin America. So, all the data um, that we used for this presentation come from DataAxis database, um, as we make available both quarterly and forecasted figures uh, to our clients for all the, the markets, uh, TV, OTT, Telecom, etc., for the 54 countries uh, of Africa. So first, um, to understand the market, some, some elements of context might be needed. So <clears throat> the region under review comprises of 21 countries. Uh, the total population amounts to around uh, 320 million in 2018. So this represents 24% of Sub-Saharan Africa's total population. And one major characteristic is the strong demographic growth uh, that's observed in the region uh, with an increasing youth population. And this translates, of course, uh, uh, into an increasing demand for connectivity, for television, for content. In the region, Democratic Republic of Congo is the most populated country with around 90 million inhabitants. And Seychelles is the least populated with around 80,000 inhabitants. Uh, there are 62 million households. Uh, and this means that the average household size is around five people. And the GDP per capita is significantly lower than in other regions of the world, uh, amounting to around 890 current USD in 2017. So we can see on the map that um, it's lower than $10,000 in most countries and higher than 20,000 only in Gabon and in the Seychelles and in Mauritius. The, and uh, in general, the GDP per capita ranges from 300, around 300 current USD in Benin to more than 15,000 in Seychelles in 2017. Uh, so inequalities within countries uh, on the other side is not as wide as we might think because out of the 21 countries under review, 14 have a low or very low Gini coefficient, uh, which measures inequalities within a country. So the, the most unequal countries of this region are Central African Republic and Comoros, according to, to this indicator. Then if we look at the electricity penetration, uh, it's approximately 33% in 2018. Uh, it's significantly lower than in other regions of the world. And there are also wide differences within the region uh, from 6% in Central African Republic to around 100% in Seychelles and Mauritius. And this is crucial when it comes to providing most services, including television. Uh, but the, the, new, the new way of distributing content through OTT doesn't require this equipment, and the mobile penetration rates are substantially higher uh, than the electricity penetration rates, exceeding 100% in many countries. But, um, so we'll discuss about the OTT later on in the presentation. Uh, another thing is that we refer to this region as the French-speaking Africa uh, because it's an official language uh, in these countries, but it's estimated that there are more than 80 primary languages in, uh, in Africa, um, and uh, if we add the languages and the dialects, and the International Francophonie Organization estimates that around 100 million uh, persons actually speak French in French-speaking Africa in 2018. So this represents around 30% of the population. And the other uh, important 
disparity lies in political stability within the region. Uh, it's a key factor to, for a country to develop because it's needed to finance projects and set up the conditions for secure markets. Um, yet it remains a challenge in, uh, in some countries in the region as there are currently a uh, crisis in the uh, in Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Central African Republic, for instance. So if we summarize the key features of the region are growing population and demand, um, a low GDP per capita on average, uh, and strong disparities concealed behind a, a, a region. If we look at TV, TV households um, account for 20 million out of the 62 million households of the region. And this represents a penetration rate of around 30% of households. Among these TV households, close to 7 million subscribe to a pay television service. Uh, this, this, this means that the market still comprises mostly of free to wear households, even if uh, pay TV is increasing uh, importantly, as we'll detail later on in the presentation. And uh, it's the opposite for the revenues. They are essentially captured by pay television. So revenues amounted to around 760 million in 2018. And here we summed up the pay TV and freeware TV revenues, um, but we we don't refer to the same thing exactly. So pay TV revenues are the operator's revenues, while freeware revenues are the TV channel's revenues. So the, TV, the pay TV channel's revenues are significantly lower than the, the figure that is shown. And it's not the same ratio between operator's revenues and pay TV channels revenues as in other regions of the world because um, a, a lower percentage of pay TV operators' pay TV revenues actually goes to pay TV channels. And this comes from the fact that the cost structures are different. The programming costs might be lower, but the distribution costs uh, hold a larger share of, for, for pay TV operators. So on average, uh, almost 35% of TV households have subscribed to a pay TV offer. Uh, and in the region, the pay TV penetration can sometimes be surprisingly high because uh, of the, the weaknesses observed on the free to television offer. Indeed, when it's hard to find diverse and quality offers on free to the pay TV markets are more important. Uh, because the pay TV comes to compensate the, the weaknesses of uh, free to markets. And it's true that the free to markets could develop, in particular with the DTT implementation, but as it is not guaranteed in the majority of countries, there is still a promising future for pay TV services. And we estimate that the gross potential concerns mostly rural zones, which still represent 60% of the population, in 2017 in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Future television is received through uh, DTH and terrestrial signals, and the terrestrial signals are still analog for the most part. Now, if, now if we look at the uh, pay TV on the right, we can see that um, a strong growth was, was observed in the recent years. The number of pay TV subscribers almost doubled between 2014 and 2018 and it gained 30% in 2018 only. Uh, the split by technology doesn't change as rapidly. The, the satellite is the most uh, technology uh, used to access pay, pay television. It's followed by cable, uh, and this comes essentially from um, the, the specific market of Cameroon because the country is an exception in the region with a strong cable market uh, divided into two types of offers. The, the traditional pay TV package, packages offering numerous channels, uh, digital channels for a price that, can compare, that we can compare to the other offers. And they are on the other side, uh, unencrypted channels um, with a subscription price of around one or two euros and that are still mainly uh, analog uh, receptions. Uh, so this is why the cable is so important in the chart. 
and then there, there is DTT. Uh, the DTT pay TV subscribers are growing because of the launch of the of Canal Plus offers, uh, Easy TV because of Star Times, uh, and also because of more local initiatives like TNT Africa. And these type of offers can have a, a significant potential because the switchover is still far from being totally achieved in the region and uh, and the DTT packages are usually less expensive than the DTH packages uh, and this is a model very specific to sub-Saharan Africa. The, the two other technologies are IPTV and MMDS um, that are limited at the moment. Um, MMDS is a, is a technology very specific to French-speaking Africa which was developed uh, only in this region. Now, if we have a look at the, the market structure and competition, we can see that uh, Canal Plus long-standing domination still prevails, uh, both in terms of subscribers and revenues. Uh, as explained, the, <clears throat> the cable analog subscribers represent a significant weight in terms of subscribers, but they don't generate as, uh, as much revenues. Then Star Times recently entered new markets in the region and its market share is growing accordingly. Uh, the, but its outputs are, however, lower than those of Canal Plus. Uh, and this explains the differences that we can see between the two charts. So the, the, markets, the market is dominated by international operators. Uh, except maybe in Cameroon, but the analog cable offers don't really compete directly with Canal Plus or Star Times. The outputs uh, also differ depending on the technology. The, the DTH output is the highest and it decreased between 2017 and 2018 to reach around 11 euros on average. So it's, it's a decrease, but it also means that uh, the output is getting closer to a coherent price for the region, given the, the purchasing power on average. And it also remained high during many years because it was the only option to access uh, quality, diverse content. And now the, the improvements of free to offers and the launch of low price offers, like those of strong technologies, for instance, on DTH, uh, are weighing on prices. And this is also why they, they decrease. If we look at HD, um, it's still, uh, HD is only at its early stages in the region. Uh, around 4% of total pay TV subscribers have, a, have access to HD. But this number should evolve uh, in the next years as Canal Plus recently launched its HD setup box. Um, and the switchover to DTT could also allow more channels to broadcast in HD. If we look at free to revenues. The revenues that are generated by the free to channels in the region uh, reach around 150 million euros uh, in 2018, uh, according to our estimation. Uh, and it, it appears that they are too low to secure uh, good production conditions, uh, the dynamization of local content, uh, and the sustainable development of new channels for the major part of the countries. So it's forecasted to gain 63% uh, by 2023, provided that countries set up the necessary conditions to enhance their advertising revenues. So the first uh, requirement for these markets is to, to set up audience measurements, uh, which are still lacking in the region. Besides, there's another issue with the fact that uh, analog terrestrial television is not necessarily covering the entire territory of a country. And this means that channels broadcasted on analog terrestrial television are not able to provide national coverage to uh, advertisers. And this is a problem that could be solved with uh, the switchover to DTT. And finally, uh, improvements in quality and uh, the addition of newly launched or ambitious channels could stimulate uh, this market where many channels coexist, but only few meet the standards required to attract advertisers. And we can see in the chart that the, 
the ratio, the ratio advertising public funding is uh, the, the the two sources of revenues are almost the same, and this highlights the underdevelopment of the advertising market. The DCT switchover is still uh, expected in many countries. Uh, actually, it, it is completed only in one country, the country of the region, uh, in Rwanda. It is launched in four countries, uh, and it is planned in five countries, and it is planned uh, in most of the other countries at different stages. Um, but we know that in this region, the switchover has been planned and postponed many times, and it's difficult to know when the implementation will actually occur. Uh, many hurdles can delay the process, like, for instance, uh, financing infrastructures, uh, equipping households with compatible devices, being able to provide additional content and therefore to justify the switchover. And this is why our forecasts to 2023 are very cautious. Um, and this is why we don't expect the switchover to be completed in the whole region in 2023. Uh, there are, of course, uh, differences between countries and these wide differences uh, derive mainly from the political engagement of their governments and uh, depending on the political situation it might not be the same order of priorities for the DTT. We foresee um, an increase in broadband connectivity. Uh, broadband is forecasted to gain in affordability and availability in the next years and to become more widely used than it is today, uh, with mobile access driving the, the increase. The penetration first of wired broadband, uh, which means uh, ADSL, ca cable and fiber, remains extremely low in almost every country of the region and it represents around 1% uh, of households on average. Um, and besides, there are still uh, large differences between uh, uh, this region and other regions of the world in terms of broadband speed and prices, uh, because broadband is usually more expensive and slower when it is scarcer. So the market will grow. Uh, there are some uh, ambitious initiatives in some countries, in particular in fiber, but it will remain marginal, in particular when we compare it with mobile, mobile internet. And the growth uh, in mobile internet will be supported by the rise of smartphones equipment, uh, which are forecasted to increase from 64 million in 2018 to 148 million in 2023. Uh, and the mobile broadband, which comprises of 3 and 4G, is forecasted to grow simul simultaneously from 77 million in 2018 to 157 million in 2023. So uh, in, uh, among these, um, these connections in 2023, we expect that around 30% will be 4G subscri subscribers. And, and in these uh, subscribers, we include two types of connections, the connections through a smartphone, the majority, and the connections through a data card, uh, which enables a fixed access. So the technology is not yet widespread, uh, but there are many deployments uh, that lead us to believe that uh, it will become more available in the future. And this evolution leads to many opportunities for, for content distribution. The, the traditional SVOD markets uh, are only starting to develop with an estimated number of subscribers of around 100,000 uh, in, uh, in Q4 2018 and uh, comprising mainly of Eurocode Plus subscribers. So it's, uh, it's worth noticing first that today the platforms distribute essentially fictional content, so feature films and series, and the international players, Netflix and Amazon, remain marginal because they don't have a dedicated strategy by country in the region and they didn't set up a, a strong, efficient distribution network. There are, there are several issues for pay uh, SVOD platforms. 
well, the first one is, uh, of course, providing attractive content. Uh, this is uh, this is essential. Uh, then there is a, a true uh, distribution strategy which is needed. The, the online distribution is not sufficient in this region as it is in uh, Western Union, Western countries, for instance. And then the platforms need to implement partnerships with other players like TV or telecom operators to reach their subscribers. Then the, another characteristic of the market is the, the low credit card uh, penetration. So an alternatives to credit card payments uh, must uh, be part of the strategy because the, the market is essentially prepaid uh, in French-speaking Africa. So uh, alternatives include vouchers or billing through telecom operators uh, that can be uh, efficient options, for instance. And then the, the financial resources are cr crucial. The, the platforms need to be able to sustain the costs uh, of uh, the development until they are profitable. Uh, and on this model, the SVOD model uh, revenues come exclusively from subscription and generally pricing are lower than for pay television. So in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, there are already a few platforms that shut down because they had not reached profitability in time. And finally, the, the harshest competition comes from piracy. And in this region, the, the lack of regulation hinders the development of the market. So the other way OTT could be used for content is on an ad-supported ba basis. In this domain, the, the content aggregator or distributor faces two types of issues. The, the monetization of content. Uh, as I said, the advertising market is not very important, but online advertising has the advantage uh, of being measurable and it could generate non-negligible revenues in the future. Then there is the question of visibility and rising awareness for, um, for newly launched actors that are not uh, YouTube. Uh, and this visibility can come from partnerships with the uh, other operators and in particular with the operators that hold the closest relationship with Sub-Saharan African, the, the mobile operators. So to summarize, uh, the the market is promising because of the increasing demand, uh, because uh, many developments remain to be done in DTT, in measurements, in HD, in broadband. Uh, the market hasn't stopped growing until now, and, and the penetration rates remain low compared to other regions of the world. So competition should intensify with new entrants and the arrival of convergent telecom operators. Then uh, OTT distribution can also unlock new market opportunities uh, that would be allowing to, to reach customers differently and more widely given the penetration and the usage of mobile devices. Uh, as with other markets of the, uh, as with other aspects of the market, this development might happen in a different way than in the rest of the world with a possible prevalence of ad supported content. And uh, all these topics will be discussed during our conference uh, that is taking place in Abidjan in, on the 13th and 14th of March. So, um, so if you're interested in the, in the topics and in the conference, I invite you to visit uh, the, our website dedicated to the conference and have a look at the agenda and the speakers. Uh, among the topics that will be discussed are uh, the digital migration, the public television, local production, uh, the economy of TV channels, for instance. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions on the presentation or on the conference?
Um, how confident are you with the free revenue data? How many countries do you actually have data for? Uh, we have data for uh, the main countries in the region and we made extrapolation uh, for the other countries. Uh, I don't have the, the number uh, in mind, but uh, we made extrapolation based on uh, the uh, the GDP per capita, the population, uh, all the environmental uh, information that we had for sure on these countries to uh, have an estimation of the of the free to revenue data. But the markets are we are quite confident on the on the numbers and the the low advertising market in the region. Um, how many HD channels are cutters in this region? I, I don't have the exact number of the HD channels, but they are, as uh, it was not possible to distribute them for a long time, they are very few HD channels. Uh, the, all the slides will be available in, in the website once the presentation is, is over in the uh, DataXis website. In some cases of the distribution impacted by people that have boxes not to get pay TV, but to get better quality signals of FTA channels. Um, yeah, we think that the, the number of people who are using uh, set-up boxes to have uh, to access free-to-air DTH channels is also increasing. There are uh, new offers in this market and um, in French-speaking Africa, but also in English-speaking Africa, where new operators uh, launched free-to-air packages uh, with a lot of channels uh, and for free. Uh, and it's uh, like we are observing uh, more and more initiatives like this. So these offers are made more and more available to customers and it's impacting the it, the pay TV markets because it's uh, it's a, an added competition to the market. Um, there, so we have two events uh, at the moment: the the French speaking. Uh, Africa event. So this is taking place in Abidjan in March uh, and we'll cover all the topics that I mentioned uh, regarding French-speaking Africa. And we have another event in uh, May in uh, South Africa, which is uh, which uh, covers the whole region of Sub-Saharan Africa. So these are two different events because uh, one is focused on French-speaking Africa and the other one is focused on the, the whole Sub-Saharan Africa. Market share by operator is the market share for the whole region. Uh, I was just mentioning Cameron because it has a strong and important way uh, on the chart. Uh, and this is a, a type of pay, it's pay television because uh, it, a subscription is needed, but it's, uh, it's not exactly the same as the traditional pay television services. The CEO event is in, uh, is in English and the, the Abidjan event is in French. Has there been any cases of operators who employed creative means to facilitate payments across their customer base? Um, the, the most used mean to uh, facilitate payment uh, is the mobile mobile banking so using uh, your mobile to make the, the payment transactions uh, this is the most used in Africa then there are like I said there are vouchers so uh, they, they are the prepaid options uh, and generally the even the pay TV operators have to set up a really strong distribution network in uh, in all the city, city by city and region by region, where they want to have uh, to gain subscribers, uh, because people will will go to the store and renew their subscription uh, directly in person and not through a, a credit card payment or like we used to in in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> 
what systems are there for advertisers to get independent proof of flighting of their ads on these TV channels? Uh, they are, there are uh, measurements, but um, they don't, they don't uh, take place uh, every day and they don't uh, uh, measure all the all the programs that are, that are broadcasted every day they they measure programs uh, a few times a year uh, and it's generally not possible to see or to measure uh, how many people saw your ad or who they are or all these types of measurements that uh, that we can do in Europe but it is it it might be launched uh, in uh, in some countries in the future but it's still lacking today. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other question on the presentation, on uh, the webinar or on the taxi services, don't hesitate to send me a mail. My ma email address is on the screen um, and if you if you yes if you have any question don't hesitate thank you very much